Hi there 3D artists, welcome back to Mastering UV Mapping and today we're going to take a look at unwrapping this book. In this tutorial we're going to be doing a full UV map for the book and then going beyond that we're going to create a UV snapshot which is something you can use to take into an external application. In this case we're going to use Photoshop and then you can texture in the application. So we're going to create an old style book cover using Photoshop once we've got our sexy UV mapping done. If you want to follow along yourself, you can get the book by following the link in the description below and you can download all the models and textures that I've used in this series so far. So let's get on with this book. We're going to start with the pages. Okay, and you can see, let me just get my UV editing workspace set up, that the UV map as it stands is not good. So we need to sort that out. And what I will do is go into face mode to make a start on that. So I'm going to get these first faces along the front here. And then I'm going to do a planar projection. And looking at my axes down here, I can see that I'm looking through the x-axis. So I'm going to choose that one. Make sure keep image width and height ratio is set to true. And I'm going to project on that. And that then is these pages here. So I'm just going to move that up out of the way. And then next I need to do these faces here on the top and bottom. So if I just drag a box like this, I'll get this side and this side at the same time. And these two need to be mapped on the Z axis project. Brilliant. So as we've looked at already, if we go into shell mode, these two are going to be stacked on top of each other. And we need this red one to not be red. That's got to be blue, so it needs to be flipped. So we're going to transform and we'll flip it. Now everything is blue. The next thing I want to do is stitch these three pieces together so that um, the pages are going to sort of go around in a continuous line without any visible seams. But first I've got to get them all the same size, or relatively the same size to one another. So I'm going to go into shell mode, and I'm going to do a layout. And I'll just go into the settings so you can see what I'm doing with this. So there's layout, and it's this pre-scale world that I'm interested in. That's got to be set to that so that the sizing, the resizing happens. So a layout, and these are now all the same height. And that will allow me to stitch these together. So I'm going to go into edge mode. And I'm going to click here and then hold shift. Oh, hang on, let's go just deselect everything. I'm going to click over here and then shift double click here. And that'll get that entire end there. And then I'm going to get over here. I'll keep holding shift and then click and double click. And that just means that I've got the top and bottom edges at the same time. And then I need to stitch these together. And that lives in the cut and sew area. So let's go to stitch together. And that creates one long piece. And that'll do just nicely for now. So we'll make sure that this fits in the zero to one space when we're finished. But the next thing we need to do is move on to the book cover. This is a slightly trickier shape because we've got to do a few different things with it. And the first thing I want to do is get these end pieces UV mapped to get them away from the rest of it just for now. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into face mode and select that face there. And then I'm just going to hold shift and double click there. And that's going to select all these end pieces. Swap around to the other side. I'm still holding shift. Click there and double click there. And I've now got both the top and bottom end pieces. Looking at my axes, I can see that for a planar projection, that needs to be done on the Z axis. So I'm going to give that a go. Planar, Z, project. And that, for now, will give me these long curvy pieces. So I'm going to put that into shell mode so that I can separate them. And work out which of these two the red one is, which is that one. And I'm going to give that one a little flip. There's my flip option. So I've now got two blue shells. That means that the remaining shells, put it into shell mode, 
are the inside, the outside of the cover, and also these end pieces. And for that, what I'm going to do is another planar projection, and I'm going to do this on the y-axis. And you can see that's giving me a problem because I can't possibly UV map the top and bottom. So now what I need to do is put my model into edge mode and I need to tell it where I want some seams to be, where I want to cut it open to allow it to unfold. And I'm going to select that one there and the corresponding one on the bottom part of the cover. And that's going to separate the outside of the cover and the inside of the cover into two separate UV shells. So I'm going to use my cut option here, cut, and then into shell mode, select these shells, and I want to unfold them. So I'll click my unfold option here. There we go. So they are on top of each other. But if I separate them out, you can see, I'll just turn these squares off to make it easier to see. And I'll turn my grid back on. You can see that I've got these two wonderful UV shells, one representing the outside of the cover, one representing the inside. I could leave it there if I wanted to, but I would quite like these to be part of the cover. It'll make texturing a little bit easier. And here's how I'm going to do that. So I've identified this as being the shell that's on the outside. And what I'll do is go into edge mode and I'm going to click here and then I'm going to go to the other side, double click and there'll be a corresponding edge selected here. And what I want to do is stitch that together. And that will make you want to panic when you do that. But you don't need to worry because if we put it into shell mode and unfold that again, it will sort it out. So at a funny angle, but it will absolutely sort it out. Next, we need to do the same thing on the bottom. So we're gonna go into edge mode again. I'm gonna click here, hold shift and double click here to get the entire bottom edge. I will stitch that together, select the UV shell and unfold. And you can see that that now has these edges stitched to the top and bottom of this shell. That's looking pretty blooming good. Next up, I'm going to lay these out to get this one to be straight again, hopefully. So let's find layout. There it is. That has straightened everything up. This one's slightly bigger because it's got more pieces on it, and it's on the outside as well. And this one represents the inside. At this stage, we're almost done. What we need to do next is get everything on one UV map and then we can export it to Photoshop for texturing. So I'm going to go into object mode and select everything. And you can see that in terms of pixel density, there's going to be some difference. In fact, I can show you that if I turn the squares on, the squares here are smaller than the squares outside. And we'd kind of like them to, that, to be consistent in terms of size. So to fix that, I'm going to use my layout option. And because I have that pre-scale world setting on, that will sort all my scaling issues out. And that's pretty good. The last thing I will do in shell mode, just because I know I'm going to be texturing this in Photoshop, is just move the shells away from each other a little bit, and that will just make it easier to work with in Photoshop. You don't have to do this. You can pack them together a lot more tightly if you want. But for me, this is what I want to do. And the last thing I'll do is just check that everywhere has squares and not rectangles. So squares on the front. The tricky part is going to be around the spine. They all look like squares as well. And squares on the bottom, squares on the pages. The only place you should see any distortion is as we go into this bit here. And that's not really avoidable because of the way we've mapped the pages. And we wouldn't want to fix it anyway because the way we're texturing will hide it and we really don't want to see a seam there that'll blow the illusion so we're going to leave that as it is let's turn the the squares off oh, one other thing that is worth looking at with the squares this is the front cover of my book and this has got 1001 on it and this shows me that 
the my book's actually not upside down uh, you could get a bit confused if you had this shell upside down so that's the right way up if it was upside down you just put your rotate tool on hold J and just flip it over and turn it the right way up but you can see for me that just makes that go upside down so I don't want that okay so the UV mapping is now complete squares off into object mode and select all the pieces to be able to texture this in Photoshop we need to export what's called a UV snapshot and that is just an image with these lines on which will allow us to then texture on top of them as a guide you can do that by going into image and UV snapshots there or there's just an icon over here so I'll hit the icon here's my UV snapshot images by default it should want to go into the images folder of your project if not I recommend putting it there choose your size so generally you want power of two texture sizes uh, in this case I would recommend going for either 512 by 512 1024 by 1024 or if you want to go really high res you could go 2k do 2048 by 2048 I prefer the target image format because it never gives me any issues but you can choose whatever you're comfortable with and the edge color for me why it works so I'm going to go to apply and close and then I'm going to look in my images folder for my UV snapshot and I'm going to open that up in Photoshop right here we are in Photoshop then here is our UV map and we're now going to do some texturing on top of this and import the texture back into Maya to see if we can make the book look really good the first thing I tend to do is hit control and zero just to make use of my space so control zero is just going to zoom in and what I want is I've already found it and if you've downloaded my project file from the link in the description you'll have this too so this old book texture is what I'm going to use and I'm just going to open that up as a separate image so I can copy and paste pieces into here and I'll start with the pages what I want to do is create a copy of my background layer by just dragging it onto the new layer icon I'm just going to rename this to lines and I'm going to change the blending mode of this layer to screen and what that will do is put a copy of my lines in front of everything else so I'll start pasting the bits of texture here and then I'll still be able to see my lines to make sure that I'm lining up properly in here then I'm going to start by getting a marquee selection I'm going to just go here to here so as much of this page textures I can get and that looks nice and then I'm going to hit control and C in this image back into the UV map and control V there are my pages so then I'll go control T I'm going to hold shift as I rotate and that will snap it and I'll put it up in the top corner like that and then I'm just going to bring this down a little bit perfect final thing I will do is just stretch this all the way down here it could look a little bit stretched depending on what kind of image you're working with but I know that this will work because the eye will just see pages it'll look good so there's that bit done next I want to focus on the front cover which is down here into my old book texture I can see this is the front cover here well the, the yeah the outside of the cover and I'm going to get this by again doing a marquee selection that looks pretty good and then I will copy that and paste it into my main image here there it is and now I'm going to hit control and T again and just start by putting this in place and I'll probably just zoom in on this a little bit or maybe not yet actually uh, I'll just scale it down a little bit first okay so that looks like it's lining up there but I have got a bit of a problem here so I'm gonna do a little bit of work to make this fit so I'll hit enter for now and just save that first bit of positioning and then I'm gonna hit control and T again and I'm just gonna move 
this image over now until the spine lines up with this first line here or the beginning of the spine does so about there I think looks good I'll hit enter to keep that now what I want to do is get a marquee selection that starts at the beginning of the spine like that and then I'm gonna hit control and T and pull this out until the other side of the spine here is gonna line up with this line Uh, and that's going to happen just about there, I think. Yeah. And finally, I'll get one more marquee selection of the book up to about here. And then I'll scale that back down so that we're using as many of our pixels as possible. I'm happy with that, that's going to work. I'll hit Control and Zero again just to make the most of my space. And I just need to do something with this part of my texture. It doesn't matter so much what I do here, because you'll hardly be able to see it, but I do need to put some kind of color on there. And the way I'm going to attack that is by getting this darker color here. And I'll just select that, Control C, Control V. I'm going to lock this layer here so I can't accidentally select it. Then I'll move this piece up, Control T, rotate it around so it's a better fit, and then I'm going to put this bit up to the top corner and just drag this down to fill it like that. And you'll notice that I'm going slightly outside of the texture. I'm not going up to the lines, I'm going over the lines because I want to make sure that I don't see any black in my finished texture. Okay, the last thing for me to do then is to turn the guide layer off. Now I'm gonna do File, Save As. I'll save this twice. So I'm currently in my Images folder. I don't wanna be there. When I use textures, I put them in the Source Images folder. And I'll call it T underscore Book Master. And it's master because this is my Photoshop file. I'm keeping all my layers intact in case I ever need to come in and make any changes. I'll then make another copy of it, save as. This one's going to be a targa. And this is the one that I'll actually use as a texture. I'm going to call this one T underscore book underscore D for diffuse. And I'll save that. Now what I want to do is go back into Maya and apply that as a texture and it should look pretty damn nice. Let's see if it does. So we'll go into Maya Classic for now. I'm done with the UV editor. Uh, just turn that blue effect off for now. There we go. And I want to make a new material. I'm just going to do this really quick with a Lambert. So I'll right click, go to assign new material. I'm going to choose a, a Lambert. And then let's just move all the way over here so I can find the Lambert properties. And then for color, I'm going to just click on here to make a connection to a file. And then click on the folder to choose the file. And it's going to be, what did I call it? T underscore, oh, it's not saved properly. I didn't click on this. 24 bits per pixel, okay. Right, let's try that again. T underscore book diffuse, lovely, and open. And now if I just press six to turn on hardware texturing, that will start to look like a book. So there you go. One of the cool things about making a book like this is that all you now need to do if you want to make a variety of books is go back to your texture, put other book covers and pages on there, and it can look like a completely different book. Okay, so I'm going to leave this tutorial here. Hopefully you've learned something. We're now starting to get into the art of unwrapping, which can be really useful. We're also making sure that we're keeping consistent texture density and that we're straightening all our UV maps off. And we've also now taken a UV map out into Photoshop to allow us to texture in an external application. If you appreciate this video, then be a hero and hit that like button. If you really like it, you can check out my Patreon campaign and become a patron to help me to make more videos like this one. If you're currently learning 3D modeling and you wanna become super ace at it, I recommend you check out the courses over at Plural Site. 
Plural site's where I learn a lot of what I know. And if you're really wanting to get into 3D modeling, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you want to get a 10 day free trial to them, then use my link in the video description below and I don't think you'll regret it. The last thing I want to do is say a thank you to my latest Patreon backer. So Long Tin Hang, thanks so much for pledging. The support of everyone is massively appreciated and it really does help me to keep doing tutorials like this. So I'm gonna go now, hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.